Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Constructed Quest to Legend. Gonna keep on trucking with this Hunter deck, see how far I can go with it. I think Hunter is insanely strong at the moment, because Unleash the Hounds is, the more I play with it, they're just a stupidly broken card. What we're gonna do is make a few changes to this deck to start things off. Number one, I find I'm having too many expensive things stuck in my hand, so I'm gonna get rid of Stormwind Champion, cute as he is, and I'm gonna put in a second Sun Fury Protector, because she is really, really great. So let's definitely get another one of those in here. It has also been suggested that I try out um, Knife Juggler, and I do intend to do that. We're going to take out the Twilight Drake. Got kind of enough four drops as it is with the Sengins and the Violet Teachers. So we're going to take that out, take out Snake Trap, because that hasn't been working for me particularly well. And we're going to throw in a couple of these Knife Jugglers. Finally, I need to put in another Violet Teacher because um, I had a gold one in here, but I had just opened up a regular one in yesterday's. Uh, arena stream and so I was able to get two regular violet teachers which is nice and we'll see how this deck performs if it has too much low end now or oh god no that's the wrong deck there we go eh there we go wrong deck wrong setting uh, we'll see if it has you know too much end game or not enough end game or too much low end not enough low end all that good stuff we'll find out so it's turning into a more balanced deck not quite as top heavy as it used to be but still um with enough endgame with those Savannah High Mains and the uh, Sea Giants to hopefully close games out as needed. The nice thing about a Hunter is that as, lo as long as you're not up against a Warrior or a Priest, you know, you might not necessarily need to have giant things in the end in order to be able to close out the game, because Steady Shot will finish things off for you if you need it to. One possibility that I am still entertaining is trying to design a Hunter deck that is a Rush deck, but with Sea Giants. I don't know if that works or not, we'll find out. I'm not going to keep Sea Giant in my opening hand, but I will keep Unleash the Hounds so that if I do draw a Starving Buzzard, it is there to go. With a hand like this, I really wish I were second so I could play out Golem on turn two and then a second on turn three, but now that I've got Sun Fury Protectors and Knife Jugglers in this deck, I should be a little bit more likely than average to be able to play something on turn two, but it hasn't happened yet, unfortunately. And he's going to upgrade. Okay, that's fine. That's not really that big of a deal. It will mean that if he kills the golem, he has a free kill with the heavy axe. But that's alright, all things considered. Ah, uh, so many three drops here. Well, I don't think that's a design flaw anymore. It used to be this deck had, like, literally nothing to do on turn two. But now it's got knife jugglers, um, you know, sun fury protectors, lots of... Ah, oh, sun fury protector, you're too late. Too late. Okay, so we'll try to use this Golem to kill off the Knife Juggler. He does have the Heavy Axe to finish off the damaged Golem, but, you know, it's still a trade Golem for Juggler, seems good. Oh god, Frothing Berserker, that's scary. Oh man, that's really scary. Well, we'll have to do our best. Animal Companion might actually be the play, because Violet Teacher could easily die to this Frothing Berserker. I mean, yeah, the Frothing Berserker is just going to kill it, and at 4 health, it actually will survive against the Violet Teacher's attack. This, see, if I flip a Leoc, that's bad. If I flip a Pig, that's good. If I flip a Bear, that's okay. All right, Senjin, again, same issue. It's just not good enough. Okay, we'll try for the Animal Companion. As long as it's not a Leoc, we're in good shape. Flip the Pig. Perfect. Okay, so we will kill that thing. And we will kill that thing. I'd say that my opponent's probably in the lead here. He's got six cards to my... Uh, five, soon to be six. I guess he's not really in the lead, it just sort of depends. Right, he's gonna go ahead and kill this damaged golem, no problem. No problem. So this, actually, this upgrade was incredibly good. He's now going to get to kill, if I play Ascension or a Violet Teacher, he gets to kill those with the Korokon plus the Axe. Is it worth deadly shotting? Hard to say. I mean, it really depends on how controlling this deck is. I might really regret if he drops a Ragnaros later not having a deadly shot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the Violet Teacher trade with the Korokron Elite. Hopefully. If he busts us with a Cleric, I'll be in trouble. But I feel like it's worth giving it a shot. Because Deadly Shot, losing it here could be really bad for me later. Although I am at 22 health. I could go down to 18 if he just ignores me. Man, I don't know. It's tricky. It's tricky. I could have really set myself up for a disaster by playing a Violet Teacher there. Okay, it looks like he is just gonna rush me down now. Yeah. Which warriors can do easily enough. Yeah, he's gonna just start pounding me with weapons. Okay, so I need taunt real, real bad. 
to stop these shenanigans. Alright, what's the best way to do this? I think... I mean, I could play the Sun Free Protector to give Taunt to the Teacher. I could play the Golem and the Sun Free Protector to give Taunt to both. But then I'm not really killing anything off. Um, I think what I'm going to do is play Hounds here. I'm ready to learn. That'll let me kill a lot of his stuff. And I'm going to see if I can flip a Leoc. So, is it too much to ask to flip a Leoc now? Because that'd be great. I actually flipped a Leoc. Alright, well that's great. So we're gonna get to kill that. Kill that. I'm not out of the woods by any stretch of the imagination. He could still kill me with weapons. But I'm hoping he's not gonna kill me immediately this turn. With Senjin and Sun Fury Protector next turn, I should be able to um, put up enough taunt to be able to protect myself. Right, so the Leoc is gonna die, unfortunately. That was a pretty good whirlwind. He's going to hit me in the face. So yeah, he's actually not even going to kill the Liak. He's just going for broke. So now, hopefully he passes with three mana. Seems to be some kind of control build. Yeah, he's got something expensive coming down the pike. Sea Giant can't quite play it. Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to play uh, Senjin here. Oh, jeez, what am I doing? It already has taunt. Oh, God, I messed that up. I'm sorry, folks. I should have clearly... Um, given the taunt to the Leoc as well as to the Violet Teacher. I don't know what I was thinking there. But whatever, this this might be okay still. Unless he's running some kind of mind control tech. I've got two taunters. This um, Sunfree Protector is really bringing home the bacon here. Wouldn't even mind another one to go with the Sea Giant. But I was asking for a lot. Hopefully these four toughness and five toughness dudes will hold up. Seems like this is some kind of a control deck, but I'm ready with this deadly shot. I am I'm born ready with this deadly shot. I would say I actually have the advantage here. Well, four minions on the board, obviously. It's tempting to say that I have the advantage. But, I mean, I have the advantage, I think, because I've got a lot of control and I've got taunt to help myself against being burned out. Brawl, I guess, could be a problem. But, I don't know, I just don't think... I haven't really run into that many brawls. This? What is this? Why is this in his deck? I just don't understand, I don't understand what's going on. Alright, he's going to kill the Violet Teacher. It's all good. I don't really mind that too much. Starving Buzzard is not relevant right here. I can actually play the Golem and then the Sea Giant. I will kill this Abusive Sergeant. And we're going to swing. And pass the turn. Okay. Well, this is looking pretty good. Got this Giant ready for the kill. He can't kill me easily. He has to get through this taunt as well as dealing 12 damage. Has he got a brawl for me? He does not have a brawl, and that is the game. Not exactly sure what that deck was or why it was running abusive sergeants. But I am on a win streak. That means we make it to rank 16 and get 10 gold. Wow, look at all this great stuff happening. Alrighty. Let's keep on trucking. So if I win the next game... Oh, this is actually a really big game, because if I win the next game, I actually will complete the last two stars. I won't advance to the next rank, but I will complete the last two stars. If I lose, then I'm going to have to win three games to get past this rank. So this is a really important game for this deck. Sun Fury Protector was definitely the star of that deck. Animal Companion. I did flip exactly the right ones in the right order. So I have to give some credit to RNG there. But, you know, that's why the card's in the deck. Because it can do great things. All right. This is an extremely awkward opening hand. Normally I'd keep Unleash the Hounds, but I have nothing playable at the moment, so I need a mulligan and really search for my two drops. Is this the same person? Crap, I already forgot his name. Um, again, kind of awkward not getting any of my two drops despite mulliganing everything. I've seen six cards from my deck and none of them are playable on turn two. You obviously don't play a buzzard on turn two, like, ever. So I'm steady shotting turn two and golem on turn three is going to be the name of the game. Nope, Sea Giant is not playable. Crap. Uh, this is not a this is not a particularly auspicious beginning on this extremely important game for my ladder climbing ambitions. All right, he doesn't have anything at least. Senjin doesn't do anything. I could have put this actually. I might it might have been correct to put this down against a warrior. Like sure he could kill it, but at least he's gonna spend mana killing it as opposed to playing other other minions. Playing this would have stopped me from falling behind potentially. Might have been worth it. Well. The choice was made. He gets a 3-drop. It is... Frothing Berserker. 
Is that worth deadly shotting? I'm kind of think about that really carefully. Cause it'd be nice to put the golem down. Um, yeah, I think that is worth deadly shotting. It's a really good three mana minion. I gotta confess. He has another one. Of course he does. All right. Well, the main problem... Uh, I, could, I could go for the Gambit with Animal Companion again. All right. This time, it's not quite as dire of a situation as it was in the last game. So I'll play Senjin. It should hold up unless he plays a Whirlwind. But a Whirlwind would deal damage to the Berserker himself and then they'd trade. So he's already used the coin. That means he can't play Arcanite Reaper. This I don't care about in the slightest. And Cruel Taskmaster, don't really care about that either, because that's going to trade against this engine. And I don't care about that. That's fine. If he's trading, I'm parading. I, that's, I don't really know what a good rhyme for that would have been. Explosive Trap, hmm, not the most helpful, but really any animal companion is good here. So I'm just going to go for it. We've got the Leoc. Well, that's probably the least good, to be fair, but... We'll lay an Explosive Trap to get rid of the Cruel Taskmaster and damage the Armorsmith to the point where the Leoc can finish it off. Yeah, Leoc was definitely the worst, but it's not like a complete disaster like it would have been in the first Animal Companion flip of the last game. Got both Sea Giants. Really, I have no idea. Like, the board could be empty or the board could be full on my next turn. I really have no idea what's going to happen. But if he doesn't kill the Leoc, if he, um... Oh, actually, this thing is not going to live no matter what. If I really wanted to play Sea Giant next turn, I shouldn't have played Explosive Trap because the Cruel Taskmaster either dies against the Leoc or dies against the Explosive Trap. Yeah, okay. So the Explosive Trap killed the Cruel Taskmaster and it um, damaged the Armorsmith a bit. So now this is very unlikely to be playable unless, unless he drops two minions, which is very unlikely. Uh, the Sea Giant is going to cost, you know, seven. Leroy Jenkins. Interesting. I assume he has Whirlwind to kill off these whelps afterwards. He's gonna kill the Leoc. Crap, this is bad. So now he plays Whirlwind, kills off the Whelps, and my Sea Giant ambitions are not going to happen. He didn't have Whirlwind. Well, this is unfortunate because unfortunately this is one mana off from being playable. Oh my gosh. Well, that's interesting. I've never seen someone use Leroy in quite that way. He killed a Leoc with Leroy. That's pretty crazy. Freezing Trap is not really worth using on this Armor Smith. What I'm gonna do is play a Harvest Golem. Steady shot. I just attack with these whelps. I don't want to run into this armor smith. I want to keep the minions on the board to maximize my odds of getting a sea giant into play next turn. Hopefully the damaged golem will survive. He could like fiery war axe hit the golem and whirlwind. That would suck. Alright, that's interesting. So now I definitely want to play freezing trap and get this cairn out of here. Which I can do. Not Pangle, you're a bit late to the party. Can I play Nat Pagel and Sea Giant? I cannot. Not not if I want to play Freezing Trap, because it'd be 2 plus 4 is 6. Yeah, so we're going to play Sea Giant first, then Freezing Trap, kill the Armorsmith. Now, there's a problem here, which is that he could play Charge Creatures. You know, a lot of Warriors are going to be running with, like, um, Korokron Elites or, uh, you know, Warsong Commander, which gives other stuff charge. So there's no guarantee by any stretch of the imagination that this Cairn is going to get shot up into my opponent's hand. But if he did... That would be a real coup de grace, and then I could drop a second Sea Giant and probably win. I mean, it's hard for a warrior to deal with two Sea Giants, unless he is running Brawls. Although a Brawl would be amazing here, I just haven't ever seen it played against me, so I don't play around it. If he's going to play a Brawl, he wouldn't have put that down, I don't think. Cool Taskmaster. So he's got the Execute for the for the Sea Giant. So he'll need another Execute to deal with the other Sea Giant. The good news is he didn't play with a Charge Creature. So that means that he is going to eat the Frozen Trap. I think a correct play might have been for him to just not attack. Because, you know, always assume Hunter has the best traps. But he chose not to do that. So the Cairn is stuck in his hand, costing 8 mana. Alright. So I'm very Protector. Alright, well that's cute. No, let's get Nat down. Let's um, play Sea Giant first. And let's give it Taunt. Shield 
Oh, that was a mistake, because uh, this, this golem is about to die against the cruel taskmaster, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah, that was, that was a slight misplay, but I, I am not going to leave that minion on the field just for the sake of having an extra taunter. So Whirlwind would be pretty good. Nat Pagel replaces himself. That's very good. I am definitely in a good position again. Brawl is pretty much the only hope that he has. Although Whirlwind Execute would be pretty good. Yeah, Whirlwind Execute would be great because it would kill off all these 1-1s. One he could kill the Sea Giant. And then he'd still have six mana left with which to do things. But that's his top priority. These three cards need to have an answer to Sea Giant. Or he could play Cairn and then um, give it Taunt with the Defender of Argus or Sunfree Protector. That would also be strong. Well, he's thinking a whole lot. Suggests he doesn't quite know what to do. Is he gonna gore hell the giant? He is, well, that will kill the giant, but it certainly is not the best way to kill it. Not only does he take eight damage, but he took, like, his entire turn doing that. So that's fine by me. Kill command, I don't have any beasts except for this buzzard, and I don't really wanna use that at the moment anyway, but we'll play Violet Teacher. Steady shot, and swim with the crew. All right, we'll hang on to this buzzard for later because I want to make sure the kill command does two extra damage. As a warrior, he can armor up every turn and prevent me from steady shotting him to death. Nat Pagel missed. It's fine, he got one, missed one. So he hasn't had a whirlwind, I don't think, or he would have played it with the one mana he had left on the previous turn to kill off all this damage. But I really don't care about Ysera. That's, I don't know, that's a weird play. Maybe he, I'm not saying that's a bad play. He might have just not had anything better, but I mean, how he just loses. Because I've got two, four, five, six. The kill command is the remaining damage I need. I Don't even need to play the buzzard. Well and we got it. Alright, that's cool. So obviously when you have a win streak, losing at any time is bad. But here we've caught a little bit of a moment of respite. Because if I lose now, at least I only need two more wins to get to the next rank. If I win now, I get to the next rank, and that's obviously great. But uh, it wasn't; it wouldn't have been as bad as losing on the last game. Obviously, because it doesn't really matter at any point, really. It's all just sort of psychological slash emotional. But still, uh, last game would have really sucked to drop back to 17. Here, I'm not dropping back quite that much. And my goal for this video is to try to make it to rank 15. Started at 17, make it to 15. That'd be pretty great. My highest ever was 14. Mage! Well, that's going to give us a run for our money here. Tyron the Mage. I haven't seen a Savannah Hymen in a while. Oh, well, okay. We got our two drops here. Watch this like be the one game where I get two drops on turn two and I lose. <laughs> now it'd just be my luck. We got all the two drops here. So not really missing those snake traps at all. I gotta say, uh, this knife jugglers could have been snake traps and I am happy that they're not. So we get, we'll play one on turn two, see if she's a frost bolt. She has not a mana worm, which is, I'm pretty sure every mage runs mana worm. It's just freaking inevitable. Uh, we'll see if she has Frostbolt to kill this with, or Arcane Missiles. Wow, she has... it looks like neither. My magely opponent has a rough start. Very rare that she wouldn't have Arcane Missile, or Mana Worm, or Frostbolt here. Now, I could play another Knife Juggler, but I'd rather use it more of my mana, so as soon as I got this Animal Companion, I'm gonna use it. The Charging Pig. Well, the Charging Pig, honestly, not the greatest. I mean, I deal tons of damage, but... This isn't a rushdown type of deck, so the damage is not that significant to me. I'd much rather have had something with more health. Wow, this is a really slow start to ship. Arcane Missiles to kill the pig with. No, she has a Mana Worm a little bit late. Hmm. Okay, what I'm going to do here is play a Knife Juggler. And Freezing Trap, I think, is appropriate to use against a Mana Worm. That pig has dealt 8 damage, which is not to be underestimated. This Mana Worm, unless she has a charged creature, is going to get bitten by the Freezing Trap. She's gonna polymorph the pig, wow. All right, that's pretty epic. So now the mana worm freezes up. This is a pretty good start to the game, actually, as I kind of complained in the beginning, but it's looking good now. Hi, main, oh, I'd love to play that. Sadly, I can't. We'll do the sun free protector. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna steady shot. I don't wanna miss any chance to steady shot. Like the explosive trap, that'll happen at some point, but I don't wanna miss any steady shots when she's this close to death. 
nothing fancy this game. Just a knife juggler, animal companion. And that's it. Frost Nova here. Desperation move at 60% of her mana. Just freezing me from attacking. I really don't care that much. Sea Giant, unfortunately not quite playable. That's alright though, because the high main will do nicely. This is a real problem for my opponent. She has to have a Polymorph for a Tink Master Overspark. There are only two cards in the game that will deal with that effectively. Blizzard! Okay, Blizzard, I stand corrected. That does deal with it pretty effectively because it stops it from attacking. Um, and I cannot play. Sea Giant here. Can I win? 2-5? No, I can't win. But I will take the opportunity to do this. To lay the Freezing Trap. Excuse me, Explosive Trap. And so now my opponent's in a lot of trouble. She has to deal with this thing, and then I've got 5, 7 damage coming through, plus the Explosive Trap is death. I mean, unless she's playing Life Gain, which I don't know how many Mage decks play with Life Gain, this should be over pretty soon. She had a, I had a really good start, and she had a really slow one. Don't think it's, this says anything about my deck or about her deck. I think she just had a really bad draw. Obviously, we saw she had a Mana Worm later. If she had one on turn 1, then she would have been able to kill my... Um, if she had one on turn one, she would have been able to kill the knife juggler. It would have all halted. Sheep is a beast, so I can just um, kill command. Steady shot. And kill her with the sheep. That's how you gotta kill mages, I think. Always deal the killing blow with the sheep. Okay, so whatever. I'll take a little bit of luck. I think I've had enough luck. Or enough bad luck here. We'll take some good luck when we can find it. And there we are, to the way through rank 15. That was pretty short so far. Uh, if I win the next two games, I'll make it to 14, so I might as well press my luck. Being two stars at 15 mean I can lose a game and still stay at the 15th rank. That's totally fine. So maybe we'll just say we play two games either way, try to get to rank 14, but the intermediate objective of advancing to 15 up from 17 has been achieved. Pretty easy game so far. Warrior could have beaten me with the Brawl. The Mage might have won if uh, she'd had a Mana Worm on turn one. So I've gotten a little bit lucky, but whatever. It's, it's fine. I think I've also been skillful enough. Warlock. Well, watch this be the game I lose because I love being Hunter against Warlock. If they life tap and you steady shot, they're taking double duty damage there. All right. Well, I'm going to keep this hand. It's a bit of a dicey one, but I'm keeping my combo, which I could be really significant since Warlocks might be playing aggro. Warlocks might also be playing as a hand lock. In that case, it's good that I'm second. That means he has two fewer cards with which to pump his Twilight Drakes and Mountain Giants. But this is actually nice. I, I am happy to be second. So again, watch this be the game that I lose where I'm really happy with my start because I can coin a Golem or an Animal Companion on turn two and then play the other on turn three. And then I have things to do for at least the you know second and third turns of the game. Okay, well, this is definitely not a handlock deck. This is, this is Flame Imp here. And okay, I got nothing to do here. I could coin a Buzzer to try to kill the Flame Imp. Something I really need to consider. I'm going to do it. Ah, oh, jeez. You know what? I'm not going to do it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tough call. It really depends. It's like a gamble on how good you think the, the uh, Warlock's aggressive start is going to be. Because if you think it's going to be a really good aggressive start, then you should do that. But if you think it's going to be slow, you don't have to worry as much. Well, that's a bit scary. So now I could try to coin out the Animal Companion. The Leoc would be bad. The Pig would let me kill the Knife Juggler. Um, the bear would obviously just stand in the way. The problem is Soulfire or Shadow Bolt would clear out the bear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to coin out the golem instead. It's a bit risky for sure, but I'm trying to put a threat into this knife juggler. And this thing can eat all the knives at once. I really don't care. My opponent played Flame Up on turn... Oh, this is a Murloc deck. Jesus Christ, I did not see that coming. Well, the good news is that Unleash the Hounds is going to kill all these Murlocs. And I will also get to kill the Knife Juggler. So that's pretty sweet. The main issue is that um, I'm not getting to play the Buzzard first, but that's fine. He's got so few cards in his hand because he played everything out. This is totally fine by me. So first you play Unleash the Hounds, get all the Hounds. Then you kill the Knife Juggler. And then you kill the Oracle. And the Murloc. And the other Murloc. And you definitely need to kill the Flame Imp as well. So the smoke is cleared, he's got three cards to my six, you know, now he needs to repopulate, but now that I have more mana, I can respond with stronger things like Sengen Shieldmaster. He's gonna life tap, that's good. So he's catching up on cards, but that's fine by me because I still have more cards than he does. He's actually passing the turn, oh my god, well this is good. I'm gonna play, this is, I'm gonna play a little bit of a risky move, the Violet Teacher, in case he has chargers. I really wish I would have had this engine, but if he doesn't have chargers, this is good to have in place so that the companion in the freezing trap give me one once. 
Alright, so he might have the Charging Murloc. No, he's got the stupid Murloc. Why would anyone ever play with that Murloc? It's so bad. Well, whatever. Uh, okay. So here, I think I will play an Animal Companion first. Just to see what I get. Charging Pig would be good. It would let me kill that. The Charging Pig is indeed what I get. Uh, I could go for the face, but I'm not going to do that. That just seems a bit risk foolhardy. Let's just kill that thing. Kill that thing. Attack. Now, do I Freezing Trap or Steady Shot? He hasn't played anything charging yet, so let's just actually take this opportunity to steady shot. So now we're equal on health, I'm ahead on the board and on cards, so I've got the advantage. It's not over yet, you never know with these Murloc decks, but I definitely have the advantage at the moment. Put this apple on your head. So here's a Knife Juggler, he's got lots of good targets. Shadow Flame, actually he's not even using the Knife Juggler, he's just clearing my board. That's actually totally 100% fine, I could not be more fine with that. Now I'm way ahead on cards. He's got absolutely no board presence. I've got back-to-back -back hyenas, and in case he plays anything big, like he has a big thing, I've got deadly shot here. Now the problem is if he were to flood the board with a bunch of little stuff. Ah, so do I get the dinosaur? I do. Lovely, dovely. That's a pretty big. That's a pretty big moment getting this five-five. It really makes a big difference. Unlocked tide counter. Okay. So we have to weigh our options very carefully here. Um, I could just swing for his face here. I think that's a bit foolish. Or foolhardy, I guess is the more precise turn. I, I need to play taunt, I think. That's the safest thing. Um, let's kill Tinkmaster. And the reason I'm killing Tinkmaster is so that I can play Freezing Trap. I don't want Tinkmaster going back up into his hand. If this had been a squirrel, I think I could still win the game, but it would be much more difficult. He's life tapping. That shows he's desperate. Obviously, life tapping with such low health against a hunter is pretty desperate. He's gonna make a void walker, more like war leader. Hmm. I don't know. I I feel like this is a bad deck maybe that I'm up against here because he's like kind of splitting his attention. There's like murloc stuff, but there's also like not murloc stuff. All right, sunfree protector would be really great right now. Unleash the Hounds, also great. Yes, we're gonna do the Buzzard and the Hounds. Draw four cards, Sunfree Protector, perfect. Okay, so the thing I have to judge is, can I actually win now? I clear out the Voidwalker. I've got four damage, plus five is nine. Okay, I don't win. So I will do a Sea Giant for zero mana. Let's kill the Voidwalker. Um, let's kill the Flame Imp with two of the Hounds. Play a Sun Free Protector to give that thing taunt. Steady shot, because I don't want to miss opportunities to do that. I can't kill either of these Murlocs, unfortunately, so I'm just going to hit him in the face. Well, he's in a lot of trouble. I mean, he can life tap and get a card. I don't know what he can do to get past these two taunts and, and, uh, and uh, my freezing trap. That would be quite the Herculean effort, and indeed he loses. All right, so the Golem worked out, and Unleash the Hounds worked out really well. Let's do one more game in this video, so we'll find out if I make it to rank 14. Or if I stay at rank 15 for a while, and then that will be my objective in the next video, is to reach rank 14. Man, the win streaks on the ladder are so swingy. Like, every time you have a win streak, it is crazy how big of a difference it makes. Whether you lose or whether you win. It's a three-star difference, essentially. It's, it's a lot. It's like three games worth of... It's like three games worth of value in one game or something. Anyway, still good, good, good session. Made it from 17 to 15, even if I lose this next one. I'd say the Sun Fury Protectors are a definite win, and the Knife Jugglers, tentatively, I will say, were better than the uh, Snake Trap and the Twilight Drake that they're replacing. I feel like with the Sea Giants and the two high, the, the two high mains, and just the innately the Hunter having a uh, steady shot, I have enough. Roko the Hunter, I have to say, in, in practice, I have had a lot of trouble against Hunters. Rushdown Hunters really hurt this deck a lot. Because I want to get lots of minions on the board. And that means that Unleash the Hounds wrecks me. So, I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if I lost this game. Let's see what he's got on his turn one. 
going to track. Interesting. Uh, I don't know if you can tell that much about a deck from tracking. I mean, maybe a rushdown deck wouldn't play tracking, but since he's sifted through three of his cards, a little bit likelier than average, he's got buzzard hounds. Haven't quite mastered the art of playing around that. I mean, I guess you could do the two minions on the board thing at all times, but I just I don't want to do that most of the time. Can I track again? Well, that is good and bad. The bad thing is if he has an arcane shot to kill the knife juggler, but if he doesn't have arcane shot to kill the knife juggler with, I'd say that was really good. So he looked through six cards of his deck. He likely has a very good hand, but with the knife juggler and the golem, I will be in great shape. Now, if he arcane shots the juggler, that's a totally different story. Then I just have this golem, and I'm not in as good of shape. Okay, well, that's great. So we're going to play golem, fling a knife at his face, and swing for three. So we got some damage started. Let's see how good his third turn is. He still has a coin. He could still play Senjin. Because I don't have any beasts, I wouldn't be able to get rid of it with Kill Command. Anyway, he's going to Blue Go Warrior to kill the Knife Juggler, which is fine. Another Blue Go Warrior. Okay, so one of them will hit, kill the Knife Juggler, one of them will hit me. Oh, they both will hit me. Ah, I don't know how I feel about that move. Hmm. That's really, I mean, with a Knife Juggler in play, like, you know, there's a two-thirds chance of any minion I play killing one of these things. All right, um, I'm going to play the Sun Fury Protector onto the Golem. It's a very conservative play here. I just, um, I just really, really, really don't want Unleash the Hounds to be maximally effective. I want something to stand in the way. Now, Unleash the Hounds could kill the Golem and the Knife Juggler here, unfortunately. And if he has a Buzzard to go with it, he'll draw three cards. But I think it was worth it to put this thing down because it killed a minion and gave Taunt to the Golem. So if he plays Buzzard Hounds here, there would be two minions on the board when the smoke cleared. I couldn't play Sea Giant. I'd kill the Buzzard of the Sun Fairy Protector and play Violet Teacher. I mean, it'd be all right. It wouldn't be the end of the world. No, he doesn't have Buzzard Hounds. He has a secret. Interesting. Well, what's the best secret? Best secret is Explosive Trap, but it could potentially be Freezing Trap. So what do I want to get frozen back into my hand? That's definitely the Protector. I got this. So Freezing Trap? Misdirection. Oh, geez. That could be bad. Hit me in the face, please. Oh, no! That's bad. I forgot about... You know, honestly, I just don't play around Misdirection. Um, but that was that was pretty good. There was something I could have done other than get into a staring contest, and I think it's a mistake usually to get into staring contests with hunters. So I don't regret the decision to attack, but the RNG didn't work out. If it had hit the golem or me, it would have been better. In fact, the knife juggler was the worst of the three possible targets. So I'd say that puts my opponent at the advantage. Lepernome. This is a very weird deck. He's got tra uh, tracking and misdirection, which are like control effects. But then he also has like a lepernome, which is really a card you should only play if you're playing aggro. Well, whatever. So now my goal is to try to rush him down. Let's see. This is probably freezing trap. Let's kill this lepernome. I cannot play sea giant, unfortunately. Okay, it's not Freezing Trap. Uh, so it's now likely to be Explosive Trap. It could be Misdirection, I guess, again. I mean, yeah, now that we've seen a Misdirection, it could be Misdirection. Well, I'll attack him anyway. Please be Explosive Trap? No, it's another Misdirection. Oh, my God. All right, so it's going to kill my damaged golem here. Uh, it really isn't the most impressive Misdirection of all time. Let's play this in case of Chargers. Steady Shot. I'm going to try not to miss any opportunities to Steady Shot here because... He's used up his misdirections. He's got freezing traps potentially. This is, I think this is, I don't know how this deck's at rank 15. There must be something going on here I'm not aware of. I just don't see how Lepernome, a deck that's so aggressive as to use Lepernomes, would also want to have misdirections in it. That seems really bizarre to me. Wolf Rider. Okay, good. Good thing I got this Senjin down. He's just going to run in and have it die. All right, that's fine. No Probalo. Okay. So now I could make a Sea Giant. I mean, that's really not that bad, is it? I'm missing an opportunity to Steady Shot. What else is the alternative? I could make uh, Violet Teacher. And Steady Shot? You know what? I just can't see making a Sea Giant being a bad play here. Let's just make a Sea Giant. I am going to hedge my bets. I'm going to I'm gonna kill this Leopard Gnome so that my Senjin, like, it's going to take him effort to kill it. I'm going to pass the turn. Okay, so now I'm ready to play Sun Fury Protector to make the Sea Giant have Taunt, which would be really great. And I'm also ready to just attack with Sea Giant, Steady Shot, and maybe Kill Command would even win depending on how many of my minions survive. If he plays an Explosive Trap now, that would kill off these last two minions. 
See, giant would get him down to six, down to four, down to one. This is a weird thing about this deck. It doesn't have that many beasts. All it has is hounds, high mains, and um, buzzards. So the kill command is often just three damage for three mana, which is a problem. Okay, so now that is almost certainly an explosive trap, which is what I thought it was before. In case it is freezing trap, I'd rather it be the violet teacher. Notice how he's had the best trap all the times. Uh, we're going to go ahead and hit. Don't miss chances to steady shot. And I need to... Okay, I'm not going to play the Violet Teacher. What I'm going to do instead is just actually Sunfree Protector here. And Freezing Trap. So I am laying down a whole lot of protection against charge creatures and other tricks to kill me. Because 12 is the point at which like he could kill me. Like He can actually win the game with like... Timberwolf, double kill command, and steady shot. Like, wins the game. So I have to be a little bit careful with 12 health. But if he doesn't kill me with that particular combo of cards, I'll be alright. Um, okay. This is interesting. He might actually have the kill here, because he attacks with a hound to trigger- Oh my god, he attacked with Leroy first! Wow, this person's bad at the game. Could he have won? Let's see. Hound to trigger Freezing Trap, Leroy kills the thing, six damage. No, he didn't actually have enough damage to- he didn't have enough damage to kill. Because one hound would have gone away, Leroy died, and then he had three hounds left for six damage. And that was all of his mana, right? Four, six, eight. Yeah, he, he didn't have the kill. I, 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 I would have had the kill afterwards with Kill Command and the Whelps. Anyway, that was a good game. Up against a hunter. That was actually like the first time I've beaten a hunter in a while. But the other hunters I played had much better decks than that one. I think that deck is badly designed. You really shouldn't be playing with... And I, Okay, in my humble opinion. You should not play with Leper Gnomes and like Misdirection in the same deck. Leper Gnomes and Explosive Trap, maybe. But Misdirection seems really controlly. Same for tracking. I wouldn't play with Leper Gnomes and tracking. I would just Leper Gnomes and fill it, fill it with all the minions you can. Anyway, thanks for watching. We're up to rank 14, which is my highest rank ever. Um tying my highest rank ever and we'll be back soon with some more quest to legend and an attempt to broach new heights i'll see you soon